Welcome to Rooted Cosmic Soul. This is a transmuting the I oracle reading. Generational transmuters from a 3D earth perception. If you want to skip this opening sequence in which I define what I am calling generational transmuters, you will find timestamps in the description. What is meant by generational transmuters? In some perspectives of reality, truth is said to be simply a belief one tells themselves over and over again. One such truth finds its belief origins in a story about how souls came to be and do this human experience on Earth. This story believes that souls arrive after choosing this specific 3D planet, Earth, to experience a dense corporeal reality where the energy of feelings manifests the energy of the material. Some of these souls believe in identifying as light workers, earth seeds, earth angels, energy workers, healers, seers, shamans, mystics, mediums, channelers, diviners, alchemists, among other words used to explain why they are here. These stories speak of choosing one's path here, from the parents they are born to, to the obstacles they face. Other stories speak to paths designed and made that create soul contracts, lineage agreements, karma and dharma defined by the spiral of time that in our embodied states many of us forget. Some of these stories believe that is the ultimate path, to remember and regard that which has been forgotten through experiencing occurrences within a dense material reality and in so doing with each experience learning and exploring, so that we may remember, regard, and release and ultimately return to a full energy spiritual state. These stories believe that with each generation, generally speaking, there arrives those spirits that seek to remember, regard, and release for the greater good of all. In each generation, there are seers, seekers, lovers, lighters, earthers, and angels, arriving with the explicit choice to help and heal. These are generational transmuters. This is a reading for those who in some way or another believe in these stories, feel into these thoughts of being, and desire to be more than just a widget designed to harm and consume without regard. This is a reading for the transmuters within the 3D timelines of Generation X, Millennials, and Gen Z. It is not a reading for all. It is for folks who live the stories told about the power of knowing oneself, the desire to be in community with Earth and all beings by way of doing less harm to self and others. This is a reading for those interested in or already engaged in the journey of transmuting the I and the practice of changing, altering, and lifting the veil on the external and internal exertion of energies that oppress suppress and control your 3D experience. In transmuting, we release that energy and engage imagining, creating, and fostering the true and authentic divine self, the one. Some spirits indeed came here to help earth shift and ascend. This reading is for those starting to remember or already actively remembering their soul's path and commitment, especially in these times of great harm. It is offered with the intent to assist you in this adventure called being human and accessing and fostering our humanity. Take what resonates, leave for others what doesn't. Using the current predominant paradigm understanding of timing, I am reading the energy of those transmuters roughly incarnating on earth within the following year clusters. Gen Z, 1997 to 2012, Millennials, 1981 to 1996, Gen X, 1965 to 1980. If you don't know when you were born, consider using your intuition and go with the cluster that feels aligned. If you are born in the liminal space between these clusters, use your intuition or engage both clusters. Thank you for being here. I'll see you in the cluster or clusters of your choice. Happy transmuting.
Okay, welcome. Welcome, transmuters. If you skipped the intro, you will um, maybe not know how I'm defining transmuters. Um, so if you want to know how I'm defining transmuters, go back to the intro. But welcome. Welcome, transmuters who are um, self-identify as Gen Z, right? So folks who have incarnated here in 1997, between approximately 1997 to 2012. Welcome. I'm so happy that um, this has found you. And really, if it's found you, I imagine the messages for you because I'm such a small channel that it's like needle in a haystack. <laughs> so to find me means um, definitely a message for you. So um, we're going to actually, I like opening up with um, a card to kind of figure out what energy is going to be hanging out with you as we do this read uh and it's from one of my favorite oracle decks called goddesses gods and guardians by sophie bashford and the artwork is by hillary wilson uh, i don't name it because i'm getting commission or anything like that i name it because uh, a lot of times i watch readings and i see decks that i'm like oh i really like that deck but uh but sometimes readers don't say so in case you're interested that's the info. And so we're going to see who is hanging out today with us as we do a generational reading for Gen Z. And we're going to look at ideas, concepts, or tools to remember, regard, and release on your journey as you are transmuting your eye so that we do less harm in the world, less harm to ourselves, and less harm to others. We incorporate this kind of energy work in our journey. So for Gen Z, spirit for Gen Z, who is hanging out with Gen Z today? Who is hanging out with Gen Z today? Do it one more time. There we go. She comes, she's coming out again. Stand your ground. Interesting. She came out a couple of weeks ago or last week for a reading that I did for Healing Healers. Welcome back, Leah. Stand your ground for folks to look at her. And we're going to read it from the book. Interesting that she has come out again. I can't tell you how many times I have shuffled that deck just to clear it and then shuffled it with um, Gen Z in mind. So she definitely wanted to come out again. Stand your ground. Don't suffer in silence. Ask for what you want. Leah is an Aboriginal Australian water goddess and guardian of women. Looking down from the sky, she noticed a group of women digging for roots in the dry desert. The men in the village had created certain rules so only they could leave the camp to get water. The women had to stay put, thirsty and dusty. Leah decided to intervene. She went into the mountains, dug her digging stick into the ground, and discovered a water spring that turned into a river. The women, now refreshed, formed their own community with Leah as their leader. You have an extremely giving and supportive nature. Everyone can always count on you to be there for them. You put others first, go out of your way to understand their needs, and bend over backwards to honor their requests. These are traits that often show up in empaths, healers, lightworkers, earth angels, intuitives, and sensitives. Goddess Leah is urging you to set some limits before you risk losing yourself under a pile of other people's needs, demands, and expectations. Leah smiles widely widely and assertively claims generous space for you by pushing her stick into the earth. She asks, are you a living saint? No. Are you being a doormat? Possibly. Do you have needs, dreams, and wishes of your own? Yes. Start putting yourself first. Ask for what you want. Ask for help and be open to receive it. You may feel uncomfortable to begin with, but my waters will enliven you. Together, we'll clear stagnant patterns and find fertile new ground. Additional meanings stand up for others in human rights, campaigns, and or causes that highlight injustice and prejudice. Clear stuck energy with water healing, have a shower, bath or swim, 
Visualize water as the energy flowing through your chakras. Write down your blocks or fears and immerse in a water bowl to release. Leave a toxic or stale relationship. Take assertiveness training. The invocation for Leah is, I claim my space in the universe. I stand up for myself. Wonderful. So we are going to put Leah, we'll put Leah, you can't see it there. So we'll leave Leah right there so you know that she's present during your reading. Thank you, Leah, for being here and holding space for Gen Z, for, for transmuters who have incarnated during this Gen Z moment in time. So next we're going to jump right into the Transmuting the Eye Oracle deck. We're going to pull three cards. Remember, regard, and release. Something to remember, something to regard, and something to release. So Spirit, for those who have arrived for the pile for Gen Z Transmuters, what would be helpful for them to know? What would be helpful for them to know? What would be helpful for them to remember, regard, and release? What would be helpful for them to remember, regard, and release? Remember, regard, and release for Gen Z. Guard and release. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Spirit. All right, so your remember card is an exploring card. So you perhaps spending some time to, <laughs> funny that I use the word time, so I'm reading the card at this moment. The card is an exploring card. Explore false concepts of time. And what I was going to say is I immediately got this idea to spend some time in uh, what's going on in your world at the moment. And to remember that you actually do have time to slow down. You actually do. I'm thinking back to Leah that is here with us. You actually do have time to take time out for yourself. Even if as a transmuter, a healer, a civic, uh, social activist, civically minded, politically minded, uh, you feel this beautiful draw to take care of others, yes. And when we start taking care of others on E, with no energy, we haven't taken the time to balance our own energy, to feed ourselves, to rest, uh, we can start engaging in the world in a way that creates harm. And so remember that you do have the time to take care of yourself, to stand your ground, to remember that you too need care. And if you are like, nope, don't have the time, this is ridiculous, the world is coming to an end, remember to explore false concepts of time. So in, in, in transmuting energy, we remember that there's an imbalance right now um, in our world and between yang and yin, and particularly in an understanding of time and how time flows. And that time is not necessarily linear, that there's exists that time is, is, is a spiral, right? That, that past, present, and future occur, but they're all actually occurring at the same time, um, sort of in a, a spiral situation. And so remember that you can explore your false concepts of time, where you, um, what you're telling yourself you have time to spend time on, what you're telling yourself you don't. Uh, in transmuting, we also want to look at um, 
false urgency. So right now in a highly capitalistic, white supremacist, patriarchal driven world uh, in the Western world that we're living in, um, there's an immense drive to make you feel like everything is urgent. And part of that is a way to suppress, oppress and control our experiences in the world. If you experience everything as urgent, there's a certain level of stress that you're experiencing, which then limits your um, likelihood to slow down enough to um, explore more possibilities or more options and more likely to default to choices, decisions, ideas that are quite harmful but we'll rationalize them because we haven't necessarily explored our false concepts of time. So remember that you do have the time and if you're really pushing back or feeling resistant about that, that um, that's, that's a space to explore. The second card is, is the regard card and it's asking you to regard cultivating your imagination around expanding and expansion really beautiful. So it actually definitely leads back to your remember card. Remember that you do have time because sometimes as healers in the world, as people who are deep feelers, who are out on the front lines doing hard work, um, we can get really tunnel visioned into that particular thing. Um, And that, that way of being can sometimes Uh, distort our understanding of time and where we want to spend our time. And so this is asking you to regard that you have an imagination and that you need, you, you might consider imagining a more expanded view, a more expanded view of where you're spending your time, of how you uh, take care of yourself, how the way you're taking care of yourself or lack thereof directly affects how you're taking care of the world, how you're doing your healing work or your political work or your civic work or however you are defining your, um, the reason for being here, right? So this is, as I said in the intro, right? I'm talking about people who are self-identifying as earth angels, earth seeds, light workers, star seeds, um, healers, diviners, shamans, mystics, like folks who think who believe that they have come here at this particular time on earth to do very specific work. And we all embodied here as humans. So we all are under the same crap as, as folks who may not identify in those uh, ways. And so that means we too have to do the work. That's what transmuting the eye is about. So regard that uh, you have the capacity to imagine in a more expanded way and to cultivate that practice, cultivate spending time, imagining beyond the box, imagining beyond what um, this construct tells you is possible. Which leads us to your third card, the release card. Uh, It's another cultivating card. Uh, It's imagine the journey and not the destination. So my first thought there is to release any notions that um, your journey here as a, as a, as a starseed, light worker, healer, diviner, mystic, shaman has a very specific goal. Um, now it may, but that could also be hindering, uh, wherever you are in your journey right now. And for now, imagine that Um, imagine the journey itself and not the destination and that the learnings that you're here or the offering that you're here to give is in the journey, is in you, is in the way that you are embodying all the ways in which you want the world to be better or different, right? So if, if you want to see the world be a certain way, what are the things that you can imagine along your journey that can help you be that way so that it becomes a you are modeling a certain way of being here on earth um, and not simply dictating it to others 
And all of this really comes back to remember, you do actually have time. You do actually have time, but it might be really, as I said this already, really important for you to just, you got to step into and do the eye work around your false concepts of time. Really explore that so that you can take time to imagine in a more expanded expansion way to think bigger. Um, Because if we are back to back scheduled, if we are, um, you know, have meetings back to back or have, um, you know, have our days completely full and there's no time in there to actually just stop, to breathe, slow down, to imagine um, the joy, to imagine the abundance that we seek for everybody else, for ourselves and for everybody else. What exactly are you driving toward? What exactly are you doing? Um, And so regard your imagination in an expanded way and release the idea that there's a specific destination and um, that's the work you're here to do, right? So if you have a particular, if you have a particular, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Uh, cause, If you have a particular cause that is important to you, take a moment to think about when you think about your cause, are you thinking about the end goal of that cause solely? Um, And if you are, there's no right or wrong here. There's no shame here. Uh, What does it look like for you to also think about the journey along that goal and what and what impact you can have along the journey? not just the destination. And also, um, that's in a positive way, but also like if you're not really thinking about the journey, if you're not spending any time to imagine expansively, you're in contracted thinking, which is in alignment with oppression, suppression, and control because you um, are moving within false concepts of time. What exact, what exact impact do you think you're having? Because if you're moving in constriction and you're moving in false concepts of time, that's where your eye is. When you're in the we, when you're in your collective, when you're working with the cause, that's what you can offer. You can't offer that which you are not. And in any event, wherever you are on this, you are loved. You are um, universe. I was going to say the universe, but I don't. I can't speak for the universe, right? I am grateful that you're on the path that you're on. I hope that this was helpful to you, that you know that you have Leah to um, lean into. She's definitely um, connected to all of this, you know, expanded thinking, um, understand better your what time you have and understand better and imagine your journey differently because you need to incorporate you. It's not just about everybody else. I'm going to pull an Archangel card for you for um, a chakra to consider to help you further download this message, to consider it, particularly if you're feeling resistance to it, um, or if you feel that it was super resonant, um, what chakra can help you further deepen your understanding or help you step into the deeper understanding if you're in resistance. So Archangels, who can Gen Z lean into for this from this message today? chakra seems to say that one too seems to keep coming up for folks root chakra root chakra root chakra you are meant to thrive dear one you are here on earth to do more than just survive you are meant to thrive to enjoy the journey Ashe, who said your, your your release card was to release the destination only looking at the destination and imagine the journey. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start the card over. <laughs> Dear one, you are here on earth to do more than just survive. 
you are meant to thrive, to enjoy the journey. Today, take a few minutes to sit in a comfortable place, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and dream of what thriving would look like or feel like to you. Ask me and I'll be there to help. And this is the Ask Me is Archangel Gabriel. And the invocation is Archangel Gabriel, take off the flight fight mode within my brain and body. Help me as I take a few moments to settle my body while I see, hear, feel, or know what my soul wants to do or create in this life. I know I am meant to thrive. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Put that there. For folks, thank you, Archangel Michael, uh, Gabriel, pardon, Archangel Gabriel, thank you. So, um, you could take this as uh, deepening your root chakra work, making sure that you are uh, really uh, spending enough time with the energies there and what you need to release and what you need to um, uh, cultivate. I often will remind folks that I see a lot of folks, I mean, it's gotten better, I'd say in the last year, but there used to be a lot of focus on like the third eye, um, crown chakra, all this, uh, you, you know, this idea of more of the universal out-of-body state. Uh, but we are definitely moving into a time where there's a deepening understanding of our connection, our deep, beautiful, wonderful connection to earth. And uh, one of the really beautiful things I love to do is to grow uh, roots, like tree roots. Visually, I see tree roots from either my root chakra or from my earth star chakra. Um, and either one really helps me really ground into my connection to earth, which then can help me understand um, the stability that's a, uh, um, that is available to me. And, it, and I can feel that the more I do that and really solidify that, the more I, am, uh, I too am able to imagine the journey, not the destination, imagine expansion and expanding. Um, and explore uh, limiting beliefs, false concepts, the things that this oppressive, suppressive, and controlling uh, construct really wants us to believe in order to oppress, suppress, and control us. So I'm going to close with a moon message, moon magic. These are deep moon messages for you to consider. Gen Z moon message at the time of this recording a gorgeous full moon in sagittarius is coming shortly i do believe this will be posted before that but it doesn't matter when you watch this it's timeless um this will be a message from the moon that is above you at the time that you see this remember the moon is out during the day and the night there's a lot in the world that is there just because we can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, right? Another way to transmute oppressive, suppressive, and controlling tactics, making one believe only that which you can see is what exists, which is a lie. All right. For Gen Z, for Gen Z, there's their beautiful card, and it is I will not remain stuck, I choose change. I will not remain stuck. I choose change, right? And the way that you can do it, explore false concepts of time. Imagine expanding, expand, expansion of your view, of your understanding, of your reason for being here, your connection to your cause, and imagine the journey not and not the destination. Gen Z, transmuter, my love, I hope that this was really helpful to you. I hope that there was something in here, if not lots of some things that will help you along your path. This is my offering to you from one transmuter to another, from one healer to another, uh, from, you know, in different ways, I could own all those titles, those, those, those uh, identities, light seer, earth seed, star seed, earth angel, all that kind of stuff. I get it. So for me to you, my friend, May this 
reading help you? May it help you remember how loved you are, how amazing you are. Thank you for spending time with me. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. And so it is, so shall it be. Ashe. Welcome millennial transmuters, light workers, earth stars, earth angels, mystics, shamans, mediums, channelers, diviners, healers. The label to me doesn't necessarily matter. It's more your understanding that I'm reading for folks who um, identify with one or more of those things in the way of know that they are here on earth at this time to um, walk a very specific path about the I and the we and do so in um, divine balance between your divine masculine and your divine feminine. And uh, yeah, so welcome. I am uh, thinking about millennials in terms of those of us who have incarnated on Earth approximately 1981 to 1996. 1981 to 1996. So welcome, welcome. We're going to open with a card from the Goddesses, Gods, and Guardians Oracle Deck by Sophie Bashford. And the artwork is by Hilary Wilson. It's one of my favorite decks, and uh, I have shuffled the deck already, thinking about millennials who have arrived here for this reading. And if you're here, I really do believe it's, you know, for a reason. There's something in here for you, because I'm such a small channel. I am. I, you know, the needle in the haystack, I'm like the needle underneath a uh, universe of hay. <laughs> so if you have arrived here, yes, yes. Thank your spirits and your guides. Thank my spirits and my guides because uh, it's meant to be. So what God, goddess, and guardian will be here with us today to help hold space for you as you receive your transmuting the eye message in terms of Millennials incarnating here on Earth between 1981-1996, give or take a few years, on a mission with a reason, rebel with a cause. Okay. Ooh, that was funny. Interesting. I don't usually cut it that way, but that was the way that I want that it wanted to be cut. So we're gonna do it. Bridget Shay. So yes, Bridget. Bridget is definitely someone I walk with quite a bit. So I'm happy she's here to walk with you. Bridget, you are a healer. Bridget, you are a healer. Let's read Bridget's message for millennials who have shown up for this reading. Bridget, you are a healer. Trust the healing energy of the goddess. Cross the threshold. Bridget, Bridge in Irish, I think that's how they say it, but Bridget in English, is the Irish goddess of friar, water, healing, and medicine, poetry, and smithcraft. Her name means fiery arrow. Legend says that when she was born, a flame reached from her head to the heavens. Her feast day in bulk on the 1st of February heralds the beginning of spring. Her symbols are thresholds, the, the hearth, Sparks and flames, holy wells, snowdrops, and the bride's cross made of reeds. That's what she's holding right there. I don't know if you can see it. Put it up here. There we go. Yeah, it's a beautiful card. Gorgeous. Okay. The Celtic goddess of the flame and the well have, has arrived to take you across the threshold. This is a reinitiation into the ancient healing powers of Mother Earth. Bridget Boley declares, you are a healer. You carry tools, remedies, and skills earned during previous incarnations. The healing energy of the goddess it is embedded in your cells. If you need healing yourself, let Bridget's bright blessings light the way. 
strengthen your belief in your own power to heal? Or are you being called to facilitate healing for others? Remember, a healer's job isn't to rescue people from their problems. It's a humble role that helps someone call in their own highest vision of health and well-being. It's always the person who's receiving the healing who chooses how, when, and to what extent they're ready to heal. The powerful ancient healer inside you may be scared of coming forwards. You may be fearful of ridicule, criticism, or even punishment. Long ago, the deep knowledge you carry was stolen, discredited, and used against you. But it's safe now to light up the world with your healing gifts. You're here to facilitate deep healing for other beings and for Mother Earth. Additional meanings for why this energy has shown up with us today is to remind you to be optimistic and proactive about healing yourself. You're stronger than you think. Or use complementary and or use complementary or integrative therapies in combination with conventional medicine and or an important spiritual gateway is opening. So cross the threshold with positive expectations and or spring clean your home to create space for new energy and or visit Bridget's Holy Wells in Ireland, for example, County Kildare. Bridget's invocation Healing energies flow through me for the goddess. It's safe to heal. Beautiful. Thank you, Bridget. So I think right off the bat, I think it's really beautiful when Bridget shows up, particularly for folks who are, um, any folks who arrived here, millennials who identify as on the healing journey of the wounded healer. Um, you know, you might just need a reminder based on whatever we're about to read here that you have you have the, the power to heal yourself, that you are on the healing journey, that you are doing it. And in those moments where you're feeling like, ugh, this is not going the way I wanted it to or I'm hoping it to, to remember that you have support, that Bridget is holding that space with you, that, um, you know, it's not a, you're not here to necessarily learn new things you're here to remember the things that were taken from you in uh past lives right and you've incarnated here now um as a millennial to do the work of remembering to do the work of uh helping others remember so thank you for that let's jump into your with that let's jump into your Transmitting the I message, which is the bulk of this reading. Uh, and so I'm going to pull three cards. One is something to remember, to consider remembering. One, the second is something to consider regarding. And the third is something to consider releasing. Right? So remember, regard, and release for millennials. I have shuffled the deck. Contemplating your generational energy. And so we're going to see what spirit gives us. Definitely feeling moved to play with your cards a little bit more than I did for Gen Z. So I'm just going to follow that feeling. Okay, I think, are we ready? No, okay, I'm going to keep going. Millennials, millennials, remember, regard, and release more millennials. Okay, there we go. Okay, you remember card? Love. Your regard card, the passage. And your release card, personal accountability. That's interesting. Ooh. Okay. Oops. Sorry. A little rose heart. Okay. I'm going to pull up something real quick here. So in my Transmuting the Eye Oracle deck... I created the deck in this way that um, 
There's 70 something cards. I can't remember offhand. Apologies. Um, but there are 22 cards that I call journey cards, and they are based off of the energy of the major arcana, just thinking about the fool's journey. Um, you know, so the larger things that might be happening in one's life, particularly, uh, specifically around transmuting. Um, and then the rest of the pathway cards are, um, the ways of transmuting of like doing transmuting, being transmuting, remembering transmuting, regarding transmuting, exploring, engaging, blah, blah, blah. You, I share that because you pulled two journey cards right off the bat, which is really beautiful. It tells me that, uh, whoever has arrived here, your beautiful millennial self, you are, um, there's definitely forces that are, um, attempting to, support you in shaping where you're at and you are moving through larger um life change let's say it that the love card is the equivalent of the world card and so thinking about just the energy of bridget like bridget holding that space what i'm wondering around is um you know where you're at in your journey and understanding your arrival here why you incarnated at the time that you incarnated um and that either you are ready to, you've done the work that you've needed to do to understand, you have the ability to move in love as a healer. And you need to remember that. And um, remember that you're, you've, you've done a fair amount of work to transmute and alchemize the energy of wherever it was that you were and that a new journey is likely um, coming in, which I say that before as I'm um, actually noticing your regard card is the passage card, right? And the passage card basically tells us that transformation is on the way. If you're familiar with the um, tarot, it's the equivalent of the tower card, right? So don't think, I think people in tower, they get scared. People who understand tarot get a little scared when the tower card comes up. I don't think of the tower card that way, but I also don't think of it particularly in, in, with transmuting that way. It's more of that you're on the journey and you've done significant work to get to a point where that shift is coming. Transformation is on the way, regard that it's on the way. Remember that you've been doing the work to heal, you know, and it's not healed. I would never say you've healed because I think that healing is an ongoing process um, and there's different levels of it, right? So whatever you've been doing, you've been doing the work to step into the world as the healer you know you are from a place of transmutation and alchemization. So that as a transmuter, we do that work because we want to do less harm to ourselves and to others in the we. We focus on our I work so that when we are in the we, we are able to do that work uh, with greater clarity, right? With greater vision, with clear, clear vision, clear emotion, clear thoughts in terms of um, how we're moving in the world, the impact and the intent of our movement in the world. And so remember that you've, You've been doing that work and regard that transformation is on its way. Something is about to shift for you. And that's really, really beautiful. Um, the, the third card that you pulled for the releasing card is personal accountability. There's something that's going on for you around this journey this journey coming to an end and a new one opening and the transformation that um i think you know that this stands for and shows and i think the doing of transmuting for you in this really personal accountability the reason that i think it's coming up as a release is we don't always bring everybody with us in our healing journeys Sometimes part of that healing journey and the way that we do do less harm to ourselves and to others is to let the door close, is to let end what needs to end. And so if you're someone who really overly identifies with this idea of personal accountability, um, 
that it's out of balance, like release any out of balance understandings or enactment, enact, enactments of personal accountability. Make sure it is in balance with understanding that um, even within, uh, you know, within accountability, reciprocity is really important. Uh, so that's what's coming to me for this one of the of that personal accountability card. Yeah, something is happening. Someone, this may not work for everyone, but no, there's a few of you. I think many of you. Yeah, you need to release a belief around who you take with you. In this next leg of your journey, because uh, maybe there's some, yeah, there's something about your how you're defining personal accountability that is is um, out of alignment with the work that you've done, and that remember love, remember that um, love can look like releasing. Right, love can look like letting uh, f- energies, situations, uh, circumstances go that no longer serve you. Because transformation is on its way, right? Do you want it? Do you want to block it, or do you want to receive it, or you know somewhere in the middle? It's not either or. So where on the where on the spectrum of blocking and receiving do you want to situate yourself? Because your, how you're defining and living in this idea of personal accountability uh, could be off kilter. I just keep getting that off kilter, out of balance, release that, move in to do the work that you need to do to understand personal accountability in a more balanced, reciprocal way. Okay, let me see if I'm getting anything else from your cards. I am not. I'm gonna pull an Archangel Chakra Oracle card. If you're not into the Archangel thing, that's okay. You can just take the energy. Um, I, I, I do enjoy Archangel energy, but I enjoy these cards in particular for the chakra information it gives. So, uh, you can leave behind the Archangel message and just take the chakra energy. So we're going to pull a card for the millennials who have shown up. Uh, for uh, what chakra can they lean into to help support integration of this message, um, understanding of this message, understanding what to take, understanding what to leave? Which chakra the spirit suggests? The beautiful millennial star seeds, light workers, healers, shamans, mystic, diviners, channelers, mediums, healing wounded healers who have arrived. What chakra information will be helpful to them, spirit? You don't like being shuffled like that. Okay. We'll do it. Yeah, that's more your steed. I got it. I got it. it wants me to do it three times. Let's do one more. This is for the millennials. For the millennials. Throat chakra. Throat chakra. Specifically, prioritize your true desires. Prioritize your true desires, millennials. Dear one, you are struggling because you are not making time for what is truly important to your soul. Take time today to dream about what you really want and make a plan of small action steps so your true desires can come into fruition. And do your best to stick with it. I'm here to help. This is an Archangel Michael card and the invocation is Archangel Michael, Release me from anything that is holding me back from creating the life of my soul's true desires. Help me to lovingly let go all 
that no longer serves me. Give me the strength and fortitude to dream big and follow through with each step. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Beautiful. Prioritize your true desires, throat chakra. If you are in the window of like, you could kind of be a younger millennial and an older Gen Z, or sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes the year brackets, you'll find a year bracket in which you are considered a Gen Z, but you came to the millennial reading. Um, you might want to consider checking out the Gen Z message. I got that message while I was reading this. Um, that, that message might be useful to you, to the millennials that are sort of on the cusp. All right. And lastly, I'm going to pull a moon card for you. I'm recording this, um, as this beautiful full moon in Sagittarius is about to fall upon us. This is a timeless reading, so it doesn't matter. This moon message is going to come from whatever moon is above you at the moment you find it. But I'm a lover of the moon. I'm also a Sagittarian. Uh, I'm a stellium and Sagittarian. I have so much Sagittarius. <laughs> so um, I like to mention whenever anything is in Sag, go. Well, you know, particularly the moon, because I'm a lover of the moon and I'm a lover of fire, Sag. All right. Millennial moon message. Moon, what message do you want to give beautiful millennials that they can consider to integrate this message today? Let's see. I am curious about my true nature. I seek to understand myself. I'm curious about my seek nature, my true nature. I seek to understand myself. I really love this card in particular because, um, you know, opening up with uh, remembering that you are in the culmination of a particular journey, I think, you know, means for someone there's, you know, the door is closing and there's a new door opening. Like you've went through this beautiful journey. You've come to the end of it. You have an understanding of how to move in love for self and for others. Now, it's not the end all be all, right? Like we know the system is going to try to move you back to hating yourself. <laughs> so you got to do the work, but you know, you're at the end of this journey. And so be curious about your true nature. Who are you now? You've grown, you know, you're moving through a new passage. Transformation is on its way. So seek to understand that um, and release, continue to, maybe some additional healing is to continue to release some beliefs that you have about um, false understandings about personal accountability as it is attached to being a good or bad person. Remember, good or bad are problematic in and of itself. So consider it in terms of, what's working and what's not working for you. And that's how we create um, our next steps. All right, sweet, sweet millennial, transmuter, earth angels, light seers, light seers, that's interesting, light workers, seers, seekers, healers, <laughs> healing wounded healers, mystics, shamans, Whatever label you use. If you're here and you've got to the end, I thank you. I hope that this message is, um, is helpful to you, that it adds to your journey, and that uh, you remember how loved you are. You are enough, you are whole, and you are worthy. Thank you. Hello, Gen X. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, um, I want to start out with being really transparent. I'm Gen X, <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this read. I love us. I mean, I really love people. I mean, you know, some people help me remember why I'm here, uh, and I have to remember to love them, but most people I love, uh, and I particularly love our generation. Uh, and I love the idea of doing a reading for folks who, um, for our generation, because uh, I think it's a little bit easier for folks a little bit younger than us to find a reading like this 
interesting because of the aspects of like um if you watch the intro you know i'm talking about folks who identify transmuters who identify as like earth seeds light workers uh star seeds mystic shamans actually as i say that the light seers earth earth angels earth seeds might be easier for people born in later generations uh and maybe not uh but for the for gen x maybe the titles of like shaman mystic healer diviner medium channeler is a little bit more your steed um and so they're all welcome here but uh so that's one reason i'm really excited i'm also really excited to do a reading for a generation that i i actually fully embrace the idea that we are the generation of fuck around and find out and um and uh you know apologies if you don't like cussing but you, you may not like this reading because i'm a gen xer i cuss <laughs> i'm also from the east coast gen xer so cussing might happen um, but I love the idea of that balance between the touchy feely and the and the tough love. Like, hey, get your shit together, um, and I still love you. That's kind of how um, I read, and how I engage in my work and my relationships with folks. So, um, perhaps that's how this reading is going to go. I don't know for sure, but here we are. So, when I say generation, when I say Gen X. I am, I have been thinking about those folks who were uh, approximately born 1965 to 1980, right? Lots of folks have different ideas about what years these generations are and, you know, whatevs, whatever you identify as. If you identify as Gen X and you were born later in the 80s, do you, boo? Like, you're welcome here. Um, you know. I might pull the limit at like 84, <laughs> 83, 84. You got to go into the next generation if you were born then. Uh, with love, I say that. But anyway, so folks who were incarnated on Earth between uh, approximately 1965 and 1980, Gen Xers. And it's a reading for folks who know that they came here during this time, this time right now that we are on Earth for a reason, to be part of the ascension to be part of the shift to be part of going from ugh, hate and disregard and harm to love balance accountability so welcome welcome the first deck i'm going to pull from is uh God God goddesses gods and guardians from sophie bashford and the illustrator is hillary wilson uh, it's one of my all-time favorite decks. Um, and I'm asking the energy in this deck to give us who wants to hang out with Gen X while we do this reading. It's going to sort of hold the message, give us more insight into the message, um, or just, you know, be a cool message for Gen X, light workers, star seed, healers, healing, wounded healers, seers, shamans, magicians, magic makers, to know is available for them to lean into. Okay. Okay. Aditi. Aditi, expand your consciousness. Aditi. Expand your consciousness. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but the book will let me know. Let's look up. I am not familiar with Aditi, so thank you for arriving. Aditi, expand your consciousness. See the bigger picture. The universe is opening you up. So mother of the endless universe, Aditi, is a primordial Hindu goddess who appears often in the Vedas the earliest Hindu scriptures. Her name means limitless or boundless in Sanskrit. Aditi is the source of all who gave birth to the entire cosmos, including all the gods and goddesses. As celestial mother, she sometimes represented a sacred cow, nourishing everything on earth with her milk. 
Also known as Mother Space, she symbolizes the infinite freedom, divine order, and cosmic connection. Look up at the sky, the clouds, the stars, planets, and the endless expanses stretching out in all directions. You're part of a vast, limitless consciousness and a divinely ordered universe. It may be hard to remember this right now as you're consumed with the details, problems, and demands of everyday life. You might feel restricted, confined, or limited by your circumstances. Maybe you've been spending too much time indoors or listening to inflexible, narrow ideas. Aditi invites you to gaze again upon the sky outside your window. Her expansive energy swirls around your tight forehead, freeing up your mind. You've reached an impasse because you've become close to alternative options, she says. It's easy to get locked inside your own head. You get stuck in a rut and you see only dead ends and foregone conclusions. Open your consciousness, connect with the divine mind and feel the rich expansiveness. You're not limited in any way and I'm here to show you the extensive possibilities and plentiful resources that are always available. Widen your perspective, stand up and stretch out your arms to the universe. Be open to unexpected blessings, surprising solutions, and new avenues of understanding. Your guidance from Aditi is to broaden your horizons, mentally, physically, or spiritually. Be curious. It's like one of the most foundational tenets of transmuting oppression, suppression, and control, which is be curious, like curiosity. Don't make assumptions, don't get stuck. So I really love Aditi that you have arrived for this reading. Additional meanings when Aditi arrives. Don't take this situation personally. So I would say if when I do this reading, if a particular situation comes up for you that you think this reading is about, maybe consider don't take that situation personally. And or study philosophy or ancient knowledge systems such as astrology or Ayurveda and or travel or move abroad and or get a second opinion and or develop your connection with spiritual guides. The invocation for a DT is my mind is open and flexible. I'm willing to expand. Ashe, beautiful. I love that this card came, you know, I think it's a, I think from what I understand of some of my fellow transmuters who are Gen X, it makes sense that this is the card that has arrived. This is the energy that wants to help us be curious, expand your consciousness. So thank you. With that, I'm going to pull from my very own Transmuting the Eye Oracle deck that I created specifically to help Transmute the eye, help do the work necessary to change, alter, lift the veil on oppression, suppression, and control. That is this construct that we live in, and it exerts itself internally and externally on our experiences and our reality. And so there are ways in which we can energetically transmute that exertion on us, in us. Um, and that's why I created these to help spirit lead us in the right direction or in the direction, I don't like the word right, in the direction that makes most sense at the time that we ask for guidance, okay? So this is for Gen, Gen X, Gen X in the house. I have already shuffled this. I'm gonna shuffle it just a little bit more. I'm gonna pull three cards. First card is gonna be a remember card. Something to remember, something to consider remembering. Second card is something to consider regarding. And the third card is something to consider releasing. And this is all, the energy that I'm pulling is really around your journey, right? The, the reason that you believe you incarnated at this time, the work that you're doing, you know, as a seer, as a mystic, as a channeler, as a medium, as a healer, as a starseed as a light worker, whatever language you use, that journey that you're on, we're gonna pull these three cards that Spirit is offering you considerations to remember, regard, 
and release. This is for Gen X. Gen X. Okay. Remember, center integrity. Remember, a regard. Investigate patterns of resistance to knowing your authentic self and divine truth. And re release sacred ritual. Time for love and creativity. Okay. Start with the remember card. So uh, center integrity is about commitment. The, the energy behind that card is the doing of transmuting, and it's about um, committing to the journey or the process, particularly when it gets hard. So if we've made a commitment, if you've made a commitment to your journey, center, centering integrity means commit to it. And I immediately am thinking back to DT here who's like, um, perhaps that's why she arrived to, um, to, a way that you can center your integrity and um, what's the word I'm looking for and uh, meet the commitment to yourself that you made is to be curious, expand your consciousness. What's happening here? Something is something is happening in your life at this time that call that is calling for you to think about it in a different way and that you are if you are identifying as someone who's incarnated here for specific reasons to help the world move in a direction that is more about divine love and the authentic self than separation harm and hate uh, expand your consciousness on what that means to have a better understanding of the journey that you're on and that way you can center your integrity in terms of you're committed to this work. The regard is to investigate patterns of resistance to knowing your authentic self and divine truth. So, it, it, you know, so think about this. It's re it goes really well with the expand conscious. Something is happening for folks who have arrived for this reading that you're perhaps considering things from too small a perspective. Um, and in that constraint, that's where you're kind of feeling like, you know, that your commitment is maybe waning. And so centering your integrity, commit to it and expand your consciousness. And the way that you can do that is to investigate the patterns that are coming up for you, that you're resisting knowing your authentic self and your, your authentic self and divine truth. Remember when I started this, when we, when we, when I started this reading, I thought I had this thought as I was shuffling your cards, that like it's really interesting to me to do a reading for Gen X because um, uh, I could sense a sort of resistant energy already to the ideas of light workers, earth seeds, like the newer terms to things that you know um, when we were younger, these were things that were um, you know were of a specific group of person people were a lot like only some people could be mediums right only some people could be channelers where we're starting to learn now we all channel right we all have the possibility to speak to things that which we can't see it's about where are we committing and how much are we expanding our consciousness um and so if we're coming from you know, like the i work the transmuting the i work for the gen x the beautiful gen x folks who have come here there's something coming up around a blockage in terms of our early early childhood stuff um so investigate that resistance of knowing who you are and your divine truth not what other folks have told you you need to be um or just in the way that um generationally and and um very generally speaking gen x we're very used to going it on our own and when you're in the world on your own it does um constrict and close uh certain experiences because we are we incarnated here to be in relationship with others to be in relationship with ourselves through others and so if you're, you might want to investigate the patterns of resistance to that work, to actually knowing who you are authentically and what your divine truth 
particularly if it is in um particularly if it is in opposition to what you've been t- who who you've been telling yourself you are and yet that it, and it doesn't feel it doesn't fit right i'm not talking to the folks who it fits you know who you are you're good that that's not resistance resistance is going to be you're feeling it you're telling yourself well that light worker shit i don't believe in that light worker shit that that'll make no sense and when you say that you feel it in your body you feel something in your body that's like eh, eh, doesn't feel good to say that right so it's either it doesn't feel good to say that because you are a light worker or it doesn't feel good to say that because you're not the, that's not aligned with who you are you may not be a light worker but it's not aligned with who you are to talk shit on the people who do identify that way um but you're doing it anyway because um you know that's who you've attached yourself to we you know we speak plainly we speak directly we're not lovey-dovey you know we're the we're tough we're the we're the generation who played with lead in the toys and drank water from um hoses and you know ran in the woods so the lights came on all that all these ideas and thoughts about who we are like what happened to us and that what that means about who we are investigate your resistance to getting underneath that and is that exactly who you are um which leads me to the third card um and so it's regard that regard that resistance you gotta um before i move to the third card regard that resistance because it, it you're regarding it with love with compassion with grace because that resistance is the sort of overlay of who the construct told us we are and for many of us our survival has depended on that on being that particular way um and so regard it but release it right investigate it enough to uh you're centering your integrity to really come into alignment you've committed to a journey to um be in relationship with your authentic self to be in relationship with divine love to have balance between divine feminine and divine masculine in order to do that you got to expand your consciousness be curious right it was the last thing aditi said to you be curious so investigate patterns of resistance to knowing your authentic self and divine truth and in order to do that you're going to need to be curious now in terms of releasing the release card um i think that if you are having resistance to ideas of engaging in some sort of sacred ritual to help you investigate yourself more, um you can consider releasing that resistance. Right? Release that re- resistance, expand your consciousness because there is a sacred ritual waiting for you in which there's some love and creativity time that is yours right and in that love and creativity time you can uh better meet your authentic self and your divine truth and so i think you know gener- speaking generation generationally um you know for some folks i am getting there's a there's a thread of folks who have arrived for this who who have arrived for this reading who are gen x who are they're you're on a little bit more of the harder edge side And I got to tell you, I used to be there 100%. I I I can feel it because I uh I know it, right? I can name it because I've I've known it. And it's all self-protection. And so what ADT is saying is like expand your consciousness. Um there was something else that she said that I think I'm going to reread because it felt really um attached to this idea of, of of letting go of the fact that you don't get to have a sacred ritual widen your perspective stand up and stretch out your arms to the universe be open to unexpected blessings surprising solutions and new avenues of understanding that could be your sacred ritual widen your perspective stand up and stretch out your arms to the universe be open to unexpected blessings surprising solutions and new avenues of understanding it is a time for love and creativity for you you get to have that um in my deck the journey this pathway cards and there's journey cards the journey cards are the um equivalent of the are based on i won't say equivalent but 
I base them on the energy of the major arcana. And you're, you pulled the Empress card, so flow, creating the divine feminine. So I really want you to consider releasing any resistance that you're having to exploring that side of you, exploring the side of you that is about creating, about being in the flow, um, about understanding what the divine feminine is, right? That has nothing to do with gender or the especially our generation what we were taught about masculine and feminine um actually the person who created this deck right here goddess gods and guardians has a really beautiful book called oh um let me figure out the name of this book because in that book, she does a really brilliant job of helping folks understand yin and yang energy of, of masculine and feminine energies. And I'm getting the idea that that could be helpful to whoever has arrived. It's called You Are a Goddess. Now, she definitely writes this book in terms of people who identify as woman. Um, now, you could be cis or trans. I don't know that necessarily matters, but I think I've read it a couple of times. And I do think if you are able to, um, if you're able to get past the language in which she says woman and understand that it's, uh, um, if you are non-binary or um, identify as he, you can still get something out of the book because it'll offer you um, things to think about, ideas to process. That's okay, Bubba. The dog is about to bark because there's kids playing outside. So Gen X. <laughs> so Gen X, buds. Can we leave it alone? She's not even Gen X. She's actually... You're Gen Z. You're older. Elder. Elder Gen Z. Thank you, boo-boo. So, um, yeah, I think whoever this is for, uh, definitely that end card is around uh, open yourself up, expand your consciousness to the idea that some sort of sacred ritual around you having a better understanding of uh, the divine feminine. Think of it as the yin of cosmic, of, of earth energy, or it's like in our, I don't know if it's cosmic, I don't know if yin and yang is cosmic, universal, in our galaxy, or just planet earth. I don't know that answer, but whatever. We're on Earth. That's the path we're on. So uh, Divine Feminine Yin here. Uh, and in that, you, you're doing that to regard the patterns of resistance to knowing your authentic self and divine truth, right? Investigate that exists uh, and sense your integrity. You committed to this. Right, you committed to this. You came here at this time to do this work. Uh, so expand your consciousness and let it in. Beautiful, beautiful, Jen. Jen X. Okay, I'm gonna um, also do a Archangel Chakra card. If you're like Archangel, ugh, what the heck is happening here? Just ignore the Archangel part and go with the Chakra part. If you're like Chakra, ugh, this is I don't even know why you would be here. <laughs> so. Gen X, here you are. This is what it looks like to fuck around and find out from a fellow Gen Xer who is a is a channeler, is is a uh, someone who loves to channel spirit and give love, light, do shadow work. I also love working with people's more shadowy sides to give them an opportunity to express what they need. So. Here we are. This is, uh, if you're not into the Archangel part, you could just ignore that. Just take the chakra message. So, Archangels, what's for the collective of Gen X transmuters, Gen X light workers, healers, healing wounded healers? My dog is so like, can you go outside now? Yes, baby. Hold on. This is the best generation in the whole world. No, just kidding. If there's any millennials or Gen Zers watching this. We are pretty cool though. Let me finish this bubble and then we'll go outside. So Archangels. Archangels, who wants to arrive 
for the awesome Gen Xers. Third eye, expand your consciousness. My goodness, I love channeling. Okay. Third eye, third eye. You'll know when you know. Dear one, it takes patience, practice, and trust for you to receive, translate, and integrate divine guidance. For now, ask me to help you and then turn it over to God. Trust you will know when you know. Then there will be no question about what to do unless you don't like the answer. No judgment here, only love and understanding. This is from Archangel Zadkiel. The invocation is, Archangel Zadkiel, remove all expectations and fears I have to receiving divine guidance about, put your particular situation there, help me to know the answer without question and have the strength to take the actions needed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is really awesome because I feel like, you know, I'm getting this message that like, <laughs> you know that you committed to this journey. You know that you committed to incarnate here at this point on this planet in this time to do specific work. But there's some resistance that you're having to knowing the fullest the fullest story there, your authentic self and your divine truth. Uh, and it's going to take a sacred ritual. You need to release your resistance to all of this stuff that you're maybe not fully uh, embracing yet. Um, and in that, be patient, practice and trust, right? For you will receive and translate the messages that you are getting. Right. So maybe part of it is you're getting messages and you don't really know what to do with them. Things are happening for you that you're kind of like, what, 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 what? Um, you're seeing synergistic things. You're seeing certain numbers. Uh, you're thinking about somebody and they call. You're um, thinking about a particular you know, way of doing things at work and someone's like, hey, let's do it this way. Like, and you're like, whoa, <laughs> you know what's happening. So... Um, Things are happening for you. Trust that it's happening as it needs to happen. You can remove your expectations and fears about what is happening for you um, uh, or investigate why you're resistant to this being your path, this being who you are. Okay. And I'm going to close with a moon card. I'm going to close with a moon card. A moon card for our sweet, sweet Gen Xers. Moon card for our sweet Gen Xers. Just one moon card. This is going to come from the moon that is above you at whatever time you find this message. Yeah, you know, this one came up when I was shuffling it for you earlier, so I'm going to pull that. I will persist. My will is strong. Hells yeah. It's like Gen X motto. I will persist. My will is strong. Yep. You got this. Expand your consciousness. Release any ideas that you don't that you don't need to do a particular ritual that's going to actually um, open up your ideas of, uh, of love, creativity, the divine feminine. Do some work with your third eye. It's going to help you see probably what's already happening and investigate the patterns of resistance to knowing your authentic self and your divine truth because you made a commitment to do a specific job or work or journey here while you incarnated on earth. Step into it, my friend. Step into it. Okay. I want to really thank uh, you for coming here. I think this is, I think we're done. We are complete. Thank you for coming to this reading. Thank you for spending time with me. May uh, you take what works, leave what doesn't. It doesn't. Ha you don't have to take all of it. You can take pieces of it, um, and know that it is an offering of considerations. There's no capital T truth here. It is about uh, having information for you uh, as you walk your journey. I am deeply grateful to have spent time with you. May you remember that you are loved, you are worthy, you are whole, and you are enough. Thank you, sweet, sweet Gen X. Now fuck around and find out, generation. Peace.